an interesting thing happened in the last 30 years, 30-ish years, I don't know, and that is this. For all of history, men, which I see here in the audience, had the concept of duty. You had the duty to your country, duty to your family, duty to your community, duty to your fellow man, duty to your brothers. You had the concept of duty. We had that in our soul, in our system, in our culture, right? The concept of duty. It has been replaced today by the concept of rights. I have the right to do this, and I have the right to not have... And we have this generation that has been protected with their little bike helmets, who grew up and are offended in our universities and offended by everything, something's wrong. Something has gone wrong. We're this generation of like fragile beings who need protection. We want everything to protect us because I might be offended. The universities in the West used to teach intellectual pursuits. Now, instead of intellectual education, it's an emotional education. Everything's dedicated to like teach them how to be offended and to take, take offense. And it's wrong. I'll stand up and I'll say it. And that's, gentlemen, who we are and who you're dating. You see? That what we're missing is our generation is this conviction of men. Imagine this. Our sentences go up at the end. We ask a girl, we, we say to a girl, hey, listen, it was like, um, it was nice uh, talking to you. Would you like to go for so coffee sometime? Oh, I have a boyfriend. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you had a boyfriend. I, I just, I didn't mean anything by it. In other words, we flinch. We, have we don't say statements anymore. You, I, I'm, I, I'm not t talking about anything practical, but here's something practical for you. Stop saying questions to women. Start shifting that into statements. By that I mean, imagine if you said to this girl, it was nice talking to you, would you like to get coffee sometime? That sounds like a great thing of reaching out and talking to women, right? Sounds good. But if you change it into a statement, instead of saying, hey, it was nice talking to you, would you like to have coffee sometime? You say this, it was nice talking to you, I would like to have coffee with you sometime. Or we should have coffee sometime. Or we should go on Thursday night. What are you doing? Let's cancel your plans. If you change your little, these queries into statements, subtly what happens in you is something shifts into an energetic leadership role and she can feel it. Statements instead of questions. Uh, hey, I, I would like to have coffee. It'd be great. That's a great way of saying it. Make sense? A little bit of like a micro adjustment compared to the microaggressions and triggering that we have in our modern society. Which you guys all know, you're all aware of that. Our convictions, you know, we don't draw the line in the sand anymore. We say, listen, to, to women or to men or to anything, thus far shalt thou go and no further. We're a generation of beige, asexual men. We're closet heterosexuals. <laughs> right? Time to come out of the closet. And I'll tell you, like, uh, I'm coming out here strong, guys, because you know what? It's the fight of your lives. I hope you feel the energy of it, because it is that important. It is the fight of your lives. We say we want change, eh, but we don't really. Right? You say you want a girlfriend? No, you don't really. Because you, you know why? It's easier to complain to yourself and say I'm not good enough than it is to go out there and actually meet women. There, there's entire programs and, 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 and webinars and seminars devoted to this concept of approach anxiety or the fear of rejection. I have the fear of rejection. I don't want to talk to her because I have fear of rejection. Because what if she, she has a boyfriend, right? The fear of rejection. But you know what is even stronger, I think, for men in this generation? The fear of success. Because what if she likes you? What if you went up there and she, you said, hey, uh, I like, you look, you're pretty and I like you. What if she likes you? Now, 
you have to be interesting and dynamic and stop playing World of Warcraft on the weekends and hang out with a girl. So you sabotage yourself. Oh, I, can't, I don't do that. So like the fear of success is just as strong or maybe more strong than the fear of failure. Because you're used to your security blanket that's cold and moldy and wet and holding you down, but you're used to it. To throw it off is scary. It's scary. Your comfort zone is, is you see? We're, we're afraid of that. Fear of success. It's that important. It's the fight of your lives. This me-centric generation, reality TV, self-help, multi-billion dollar industry. What are you going to do for me? This is the women of the world. What are you going to do for me? Where are we going to be in five years? What does this mean? What, it's all me. We're navel-gazing. We're centered on ourselves. There's no sense of communion with brothers and sisters. That, and there's no communion anymore at all. Even though we think we're on Facebook and we're not. There's no sense of connection. And you can feel it. You feel it everywhere. There's no sense of gathering and, 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 and brothers in arms and any of this kind of stuff. And if you watch a lot of porn, which probably a lot of guys in the audience do, you turn it off at the end, and what do you see reflected in the screen? You. Just you. And that hurts. That hurts. You feel it right here. It's just you there. That's it. This is where our failing is. This is my crusade. So I wrote a book for my young self. So, I could, so if I only had those answers then, when I was being insecure and not sincere and manipulative and trying to be this cool guy. The question to ask yourself, gentlemen, is this. What exists because of you? What a thought, huh? What a thought. What exists? Do you feel the energy of that? Everything else is small. The girl doesn't text you back, that's small. What exists because of you? So my whole thing that I've been trying to understand and trying to talk about is the polarity which we've lost in this world of men being men and women being women. The masculine edge of the, the masculine spirit of men is a thrusting nature. It's a penetrative energy. We can't penetrate our women, we can't penetrate our lives, we can't penetrate our businesses, we can't... We're like, oh, we're apologetic, it's okay, it's good enough, we're beige. We can't penetrate anymore. And I'll say this, it's politically incorrect, and I'll get slammed for it and I don't care. The energy of women is a receiving energy. To receive that penetration, to receive that masculine energy into the feminine spirit, and to rebirth it, to give it rebirth. The true feminine spirit, which is gone from the earth, just like the true masculine spirit is gone from the earth. The true feminine spirit is a regenerative, life-giving energy. And if you have, and I know you have, if you've ever been in the presence of a woman that has a, just even 10% of that beautiful feminine grace, you'll never forget her till the day you die. Am I right? Some woman that was just kind and gave you of her generous feminine spirit breaks your heart. It breaks your heart. If you make love to a beautiful woman that is way out of your league, quote unquote, who's a beautiful, generous energy of, of receiving your masculine spirit and giving you the rebirth that we crave, if you're in bed with that woman and she gives you that energy, you almost cry. It breaks your heart. And it's rare as a tiger lily. It's rare. It's a rare spirit. When you make love to a beautiful woman, imagine this, guys, all is forgiven. All the rejections you had, all the mistakes you made talking to women, all the, the mess-ups you made when you thought, it's all forgiven. Everything's forgiven. You reset. That's, like I said, it's politically incorrect. I'll say it. This is the receiving role of women. And there's countless women out there trying to restore that balance too. Believe me. You hear all the, this strong feminist bitchy agenda. You hear this, all the strong men beating their chest, painting their faces, take back the power from women. 
that's 20% of the voices, guys. 80% is the silent majority who, of men and women who really want restoration, want, want, a, want a beautiful balance again. Of polarity of men and women, of this beautiful magnetic energy that attracts. We don't have that. We have sameness. We are all born under this so-called second wave equality movement. And the goal of the equality movement was equality. And we didn't get it. 60 years later, we still don't have equality. We have sameness. Men are more like women, women are more like men. And there's no attraction in that at all. We go to our offices and you have to be eyes front. If you comment, hey, I like you, hey, you look nice today, sexual harassment. You can't even say that. You offended me and I have protection powers to, 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 to take a dump on you because of that. Right? So we have to be asexual underneath the fluorescent lights in our offices, asexual, eyes front, Everyone's, everyone has no gender. And then you're supposed to turn it on in the weekend when you go out? There you go, <laughs> that's our problem. You can't. And then I hear a guy say to me this, well, women are mean. They're not nice. Yeah, well, women have their own work to do, gentlemen. We can't wait for them. It's up to you. It's up to you to stand on this earth and say, you know what, no more. I want, I want to have a great path of life. I want to have a spirit of adventure, spirit of treasure hunting, spirit of mystery, spirit of like, I like nice things. You look like a nice thing. What's your name? Women are mean and they're rejecting and they're the ones in power. And they're the ones that pick the, I like you, but I don't like these guys. We seemingly think. But women are not to blame. Women are just as, women are no more enlightened or or aware than you are. They're just as lost and confused and scratching their head too. It's, our, it's, it's what we're, this is our modern age. And it's time for a generation of men to say no more. Let's, let's stand on this earth, not in a fight against women, not in a fight against this energy, but in a reclamation of the beautiful God-given gift of masculine sexuality. In our Western world, if you're a man, you're this close to being a rapist. And, and, and we need to, on college campuses and in, in universities and in uh, organizations, uh, programs to teach you how not to rape. That's a sin. That's a sin. Fight it with everything you've got, because that's a sin. That's wrong. It's a fight of our lives. But it's not a fight against women. Remember that. Women are lost to. Women have been sold a bill of goods to. Women have been taught the wrong things. It's not a fight against that. It's a fight against, it's a fight for a new spirit of regeneration. It's men and women and the polarity, which is a beautiful thing. I know that there's a volume, and I'll tell you this guys, you've been with bad women who've been mean to you, who've been vindictive and bitchy and, and petty and, and small-minded and all these things, just like this vindictive, bitchy, petty, small-minded men. In all the years, in all my time, I've ever met women who are like mean, not good-spirited women, not nice people. I've met a lot of women who have, good, who have gracious hearts. And there's a lot of them out there. So believe it. Don't lose hope, because I don't lose hope. We're missing beauty in art, in architecture, in everything. We've lost the aesthetic thing, which we used to have from the Greeks and the Romans with the golden rectangle, and everything had to be, everything had to be in proportion, and, and beauty was one of the elements with truth and everything else that was revered. And not today, and everything's all like, uh, art is a, a cow cut in sections, and a, an artist taking a shit in a can. That's art. Right? We've lost aesthetic, <laughs> it's true. We've lost aesthetic beauty, and, I, and, it, and my mission is to, is, to, is to speak, to reclaim that. That's your mission too. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I hope you can get this. I hope you can feel the energy of what I'm trying to say, because it's up to you. And if you can take this mission into your heart, to speak truth to women, say, you know what? I like, this is how it is. This is who I am. I'm nervous to talk to you, but I want to talk to you anyway. Your life will change, and the world will change. We're waiting for, things to, for women to be nice to us. We're waiting for things to change and be better. It's not going to happen. It's up to you. This is for you guys. This is for you. Do you feel it? It's for you. 
It's for my young self when I was 19 and lost and crying for girls. We say, well, I can't live a life of adventure and because, like, because I have to first do that. In all of history, gentlemen, we said, okay, we have, I had this bad childhood. So like, this is why I'm insecure and, and I have this bad childhood. In all of history, was there any, ever a time of good childhoods? There was disease and pestilence and migration and, and wars and famine. Every child before you grew up seeing destruction and death and disease and trouble and famine starvation, getting thrust out of homes, and we're whining? There has never been happy children, happy childhoods, ever. There's been trauma in all childhoods. And we have to resolve our childhood? I don't think so. You have to go to therapy to resolve your childhood? No, you don't. You're abused, you're abandoned. You were, we all were, gentlemen. In all of history. We stand on the earth and say, no more, no more. It's your job. Nobody's going to do it. Nobody's going to give you that lift up. Here's what you do. You look in the mirror. Instead of saying, you suck, you're not good for anything, nobody will ever love you, you look in the mirror and you say this. Say this is, this is your new thing that you call yourself from now on. I'm a student of life. If you can call yourself a student of life from this day forward to the day you die, you can do no wrong. If you talk to a girl last night and she's like, rah, 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 and, and you go home and instead of saying, you know what, you suck, you should have been more funny, you should have been more, you can say, hey, at least I'm a student of life. Were you sincere when you talked to that girl last night? Were your heart sincere? Were you trying to be nice and trying to be interesting and trying to be funny, right? You were sincere. And she's being, shutting you down and being bitchy to you. You can go home and say, at least I'm a student of life. At least I showed up. Now, if you're sincere, you can, you can do no wrong. You have no... You did, no, you did nothing to, to beat yourself up about. You showed up. You showed up as a man. Hey, at least I, I like nice girls. And I'm trying to see if you're a nice girl. I get it that you're not. That's okay too. I will move my energy somewhere else. We want security, you know. Like before I, this generation, I get guys ask me all the time, how do I, like, you know, I want to live a life of adventure and, and go into this world. But for first, I have to save up all this money and I have to like worry. Imagine this, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago, 500 years ago, guys are going into wooden ships. There was no medical insurance. They didn't have savings. Going into, into, into whatever. They didn't have a backup plan. They didn't have plan B. They didn't have like, a, okay, at least I can go to an ATM, get some cash out of my parents, call my parents if I get in trouble. Strong guys. I hope you can feel what I'm trying to say because I wish I had it. It's a message to me. I, I promise you that. This is why women have no... Women will go have sex with you because they're horny or you, and you smell nice and there's nobody else and she's, she's ovulating. She'll have sex with you. But she doesn't think... Is she thinking about you the next day? The question I asked myself when I was young, I thought, this popped into my mind and it shocked me and it broke my heart and made, and, and made me cry, which is this. Every woman is thinking about somebody. Imagine that. My question I asked myself when I was young, I looked in the mirror and I said, because it hit me hard, I said, wait a minute, have you ever been a woman's fantasy? If not, why not? She's thinking about somebody. When she's in the shower, she's in her bed, she's daydreaming, out the way, she's, and she's, she's excited about somebody. She's thinking about, she's fantasizing about some guy. Is it, is it, I said this to me, is it you? Has it ever been you? Ask yourself that question. Is there a woman out there in this world right now who's fantasizing about you as she's laying in bed? This is the energy we have to fight for. This is where we're going. And this is the only place to go. And I believe in it 100%. And I believe in it for you 100%. I really do.